Good morning. Happy New Year. <clears throat> Welcome to 2024. This is going to be a good year. I can feel it. Let me know in the comments if you are actually joining our reset programs. We're going to be doing a global reset starting January 15th. 28 days of movement, education, supplementation, cleaning your environment, and self-awareness. So you actually have to start the one, the three, and the seven by January 4th. But the 28 day life reset, it's, uh, it's gonna be a good one this year. This is the first time we've ever done it with a group of people collectively together online. We actually, one year ago, did it in person with a small group of 10 people. We did our own 28 day life reset. It was the first one we ever did in person. And here we are, Groundhog Day. We're gonna be doing it with other people all around the world, but in a different way, on a bigger scale. So. I'm super excited for that. If you're already in there and signed up, let me know in the comments. If you're not, you should get in there and sign up. You can do that on our website. <clears throat> so for today, we're gonna do a couple of movements. I might bring some people up on live or answer some questions, depending on what comes up, what flows. We'll kind of just go with that. I am actually in Gary's spot today, so I moved. I kind of like it. Um, okay, so uh, is it through the, through an app? It's through a circle, but just go to our website, humangarage.net. You can sign up there. It will take you through the entire process. All right, what movement do we want to start with? Put in the comments. If you know the names of our movements, let me know which one you want me to guide you through this morning to start off the day. Groundhog Day is February. Yes, Groundhog Day is February, but Groundhog Day is actually every day. The way that I see it is energy comes around every single year at the same time when the sun cycles and we have repeating patterns. So if you look at anything in the universe, it has a sign pattern. So it comes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, uh, expand, contract, expand, contract, expand, contract, repeat. And the reason why that is important to know is what were you doing last year at this time? What were you doing the year before at this time? What were you doing the year before at this time? And I ask that because every single year it repeats. If I look at what I was doing last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that, I was doing the same thing. I was just doing it at a higher level because I've been improving and growing myself. This has happened countless times with things that I've paid attention to. For example, when I did my 44 day fast, we didn't eat food for 44 days. That started on May 12th of 2021. Well, a year later, no, actually two years later, we did a fast again, but this time our fast was from life. We went and lived on a beach for uh, 28 days. Yeah, 28 days on May 13th. So on the Gregorian calendar, it's not the same. But if you take it from the astrological calendar, it is. Now, did we plan that? No, it just happened to be at the same time. Another example is we hosted a retreat November of 2022, and we hosted it on November 16th. Well, this year we hosted one, I think it was November 17th in Costa Rica this time. So again, Groundhog Day, did we plan it to be on the same time? No, but what happens is the energy is there and it's amplified. You have energy that hits the earth and it hyper focuses on an area of your life. So right now we're in Capricorn season. Capricorn season is about structure, organization, uh, discipline, commitments. So right now people are trying to commit to new patterns, new daily habits, new routines. They're trying to organize their life, maybe organize their room or get rid of clutter, things that they don't want anymore. That's what Capricorn's about. So every year when Capricorn comes around, I look at our structure of human garage and I analyze it. And then I look and see if there's better ways and cleaner ways and more organized and simple ways to structure and process things so that we can scale and we can grow. And every single year I have focused on that during this season, only this year, because I'm now on year four of doing that for human garage, I'm actually finding the solutions that I had originally looked for. And the reason why is I now have the skill sets, the awareness, the knowledge, and the persistence that was needed in order to find the solutions that I was looking for. 
on year number one of that Groundhog Day, I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't have the skill sets. I wasn't ready to receive what I was looking for. So as you grow as a human being, the Groundhog Day gets better. But if you're not growing yourself and you're stuck in a rut and you're not moving anywhere, then sometimes it gets worse. Um, another one that was actually funny. I, before Human Garage, I cracked a tooth and it was in December. And this was about five, four or five years, four years ago, right before I cracked a tooth. And every year in December, I had like teeth or gum issues you know, a swollen gum or I bit my lip or something was irritated. And I just watched this every year at the same time of the year, I had similar issues come up in my body or in my life. So why in the 28 day do we talk about journaling and self awareness? The reason why is because we want you to pay attention to your patterns. People who can predict patterns based on looking at past information and looking at where things are headed, are usually more successful. That's why people in stock markets, people in politics, people in business, uh, investors, they, they're watching the patterns and then they're saying, okay, based on the patterns, I see this is the direction things are going, therefore I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. So they're actually ahead of the curve. Where is the world going right now? The world, if you look at the patterns of the universe, if you look at the patterns month over month, year over year, where are we moving economically? Where are we moving politically? Where are we moving in terms of health? It's all crashing right now. Over 2024, we're going to see a massive crash in the market. We're going to see massive shift in people's health where people are gonna be looking for help. We're gonna see a massive change in political and, and higher power. And that's because I know that because I'm watching the patterns. I'm watching the Groundhog Day. I've seen this story before, it's happened before. So what happens when this happens? What do people do? How do people react to it? The only difference is I also am looking at now we are different than we were before. We're now in the Aquarian age. The Aquarian age is about technology and it's about advancements. It's about humanitarianism. It's about community. It's about belonging. It's about, uh, it's about being in alignment with who you are. So adding that into the Groundhog Day and the patterns that we currently have, there's going to be a, a little bit of a different reaction to this year than we had in 2008 and 2012 and 2014 and all the other years that we had these things come up. People are different than they were before. So we're going to see a different result. And the reason why is right now, Aquarian age is about technology. It's about advancements. We have just seen a little snippet of what technology can do for human beings. And after January, I think it's like 26th or 24th or something like that, we're going to see a massive surge in technology and apps and programs that are going to help you live a better life. Now, what you do with that is your choice, but it is going to change how we function and operate as a human race. <clears throat> Is anybody else seeing that? Let me know in the comments. This is gonna change things. And I keep saying it to people. Um, the technology that's coming out today, most of it is, it's not going to necessarily replace human beings. What it's going to do is it's going to take away the mundane tasks that take up all your time and wear you out so that you can focus on higher level thinking, you can focus on the bigger picture, you can focus on your dreams, you can focus on what's actually important to you. For example, if you, need to write a blog post or an article, but you're not a good writer. Well, take a video, and because you're good at filming yourself and talking to a camera, then you can transcribe that, you can write an article with it, and then you can just slightly polish it with your touch on the end of it. So 80% of the writing was done by AI, but you're still doing it. Humans still have to come in and have some sort of intervention or, or, or addition to the AI and what it's capable of to make sure that it still has your unique touch to it. <clears throat> so it will make your life easier, but it's not gonna replace everything completely. And the things that it does complete, uh, replace might feel a little bit um, frustrating at first because maybe that's your job. But if AI can do that, then you don't have to. So if you don't have to, what can you do with your time now? Think about it like this. 
if for example you had a robot and that robot you could input what groceries you needed and it would go to the store and get the groceries for you and drop it off at your home or you could just import it into a computer and then it's delivered at your doorstep what are you going to do with all that time that time that you spend and the energy that you spend when you go to the store you look at all the colors you look at all the labels you you you're interacting with all these people you're doing all this stuff you're stuck in traffic you're packing you're lifting you're moving around well now it's delivered to your house in minutes okay what are you going to do with that extra hour or extra two hours now you have that energy to do something else you can use that energy to better yourself as a human being you can use that energy to focus on your passion so yes there is going to be consequences to having some technology but there's also going to be a lot of positive effects of it and, and there's a lot of people right now who are resisting it. And I'm going to say it right now that everybody who resisted Facebook, like the older generation, they said, I'm never going to get Facebook. I'm never going to use, uh, use YouTube. I'm never going to use a website. Well, now they're all using it. And the reason why is there's a lot of benefits that come with it. I don't want to attack the tool. Let's focus on how we're using the tool. Everything can be used as, as something that's, that's beneficial, but also harmful. Food, food is a medicine, but if you overuse it, it's a drug and it can hurt you. Well, technology can make your life better, but it can also hurt you if you misuse it, if you overuse it. So let's not beat down technology and where the world's going. Let's use it to make our lives better because that's the direction that we're moving. You're no longer going to have to focus on the mundane tasks. You're no longer going to have to focus on the silly details that, that aren't actually that important. You can focus on the things that you're passionate about. Send the robot to the market. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's more likely that it'll just get dropped off by a drone. I think that, uh, I think Amazon is using like a drone landing pad on your house so it can drop stuff off now. I'm not sure. I think they're working towards that. Um, yes. AI becoming smart enough. I mean, look, again, what I said, it can be used as something to help us. It can also be used as something to harm us. Uh, the challenge with where the direction that AI is going is that it's so smart that it can it can actually create harm, obviously. Um, it all depends on the operator. If the operator on the other end of the AI or the robot or the, the technology puts in an input that could harm people, it's going to help facilitate them harming people. But that's with anything. So um, there will be rules, there will be laws, there will be things that come out that help mitigate these um, these issues. But that's what Elon's working on right now. I don't, I don't really know the direction, how that's going. There's a lot of drama in that space. Um, drone pollution. I mean, I don't really think you're going to have drone. Pol drone pollution is in what, like actual pollution coming off of the drone or just too many drones in the sky? I mean, I want to be in nature. I don't want to have too much technology around me, but I do want to have more time. What's more beneficial to you? To have more time, to have an easier life, to not have to focus on all the mundane details and tasks that take up most of your day, so that you can focus on the things that you want, spending more time with your family, spending more time in nature, spending more time with your dogs, cooking, taking care of your body, doing all that stuff. That's more important to me. If technology is a vessel to help me do that, then great. If it's not, and it's gonna make my life harder, then that's another conversation. AI page do you recommend? I do, I mean, there's, there's a million AI uh, pages and products coming out right now. I don't think we've really seen it. I think 2023 was just a test. 2024 is when we really see a big uptick in how technology is gonna be used. Time in hand with doing your favorite things. Absolutely, I agree. Do the things that you love. That's what I want to focus on. Um, but I also, I also see where the world's going because if you give, like, let's say 30 years ago, the only person who had an executive assistant is, is like a CEO of a company, you know, somebody who has a lot of money or a lot of resources. Today, an everyday person or even a homeless person who has nothing could have an assistant next to them, which is a bot. So that allows you to manifest faster because when you ask for something, you're going to receive it faster. 
if you, back in the day, if you didn't know something and you wanted to find out the answer, you would have to go all the way to the library. You got to like go to the library aisles. You got to find the, the book code or what, or the, you know, where it is in the alphabetical order. You got to find it and then you got to read through it. Nope, that's the wrong book. Read through the next one. Nope, that's the wrong book. Read through the next one. Now you can just search it in Google. So your manifesting power or time to manifest is increasing. It's speeding up so that you're able to create more. You can create more today than you could create before. And that's the benefits of it. People today who did not have the ability to build their own farm have hydroponics and aquaponics and all these electrical systems and, and, and self-sustainable systems that they can put in their house and grow their own food. So over the next few years, I'm going to see, or I believe where we're going is, we're creating awareness at Human Garage around the chemicals in your environment are hurting you. Well, that's gonna motivate a lot of people to start growing their own food, creating technology to grow their own food, um, creating systems to make this stuff easier. Then a bunch of people are gonna get interested in it. They're gonna start building their own software, platforms, equipment to grow their own food in their house. Then it's gonna, it's gonna be really expensive at first, then it's gonna get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so that the everyday person can grow food in their own house. Now, if everybody could grow their own food, what does that do to the world? That changes everything. So this is where we're going. Food is gonna change. Education, we used to have to go to school to learn everything. Now you can go to YouTube and learn whatever you want, whenever you want, as fast as you, as fast as you want, at your own pace, um, at your own interest from experts in any discipline. You can go on YouTube right now and you could look up a billionaire's advice. When in the world could you do that? 20 years ago, you're going to school and the only person who's teaching you is your teacher and you're limited to their ability to teach you. So if they only have a little bit of knowledge, then you're only gonna learn what they know. And who knows what they know? Who, you don't even know what your, what your teachers are teaching your kids. Now your kids can go and based on an interest, they can go and learn anything that they want from an expert. You used to have to pay $75,000 a year, or sorry, $75,000 for a week to spend time with a billionaire to teach you everything that they know. Now you can do it for free on YouTube. So the education system's gonna change. So your food's gonna change, your education system's gonna change. It's, it's all gonna change. The entire structure of the world is going to change. It's happening right now. Over the next 10 years, we're going to see a massive shift. I don't think I even understand it. I, I have no idea the impact that this is gonna have. Where's my cacao? <laughs> Sorry, gotta have my morning cacao. Imagine the surplus in the land. Yeah, I mean, they say that we're overpopulated, but I flew over Mexico the other day and 95% of Mexico is just trees. Fly over Canada, 98% of Canada is just nature. So it's not true. We are not overpopulated. There's a ton of land. We just don't live around it. And the reason why we don't live around it is because we don't have the technology available to support it. For example, you need right now highways. You need access to, to water. You need access to electricity. Well, if you had the technology that allowed you to do that in the middle of nature, then would we maybe take advantage of that 98% of land that's available in Canada? Or would we be stuck in a smart city? See, this is where the technology is gonna help. There's technology that you don't need power lines uh, to get electricity into your house. What if we started using that? Then we could live anywhere. What if you had ways to support yourself with food anywhere? This is, this is where we're going, guys. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, frustration, fear, grief, sadness, and emotions towards where the world's going right now, but I see it actually getting better. I see right now is just awareness of all of the things that we tried over the last 100 years that didn't work so that we could watch it we now have enough data points to say what we were doing did not work. Okay, great, whatever. I mean, we make mistakes all the time. We fail at things all the time. How do you get good at something? You fail, you fail a lot. Do something over and over again, then you watch the result over and over again, and then eventually you will see the way to go. 
well, this is the point that we're at. We're now at the, the last failure point, but it's just a lot of failures all at once. It's the system, it's the economics, it's the education, it's the health, it's the politics. It's, they're all crashing at the same time, which again, it's gonna feel extremely intense. Remember when you're, when you're learning something and you fail like at five things in a row, how that feels. Well, that's how the world is feeling right now. And when that crumbles, then we're going to be looking around and saying, okay, is there another way to do things? That's where we're at right now. And to me, that's an exciting time because I looked at the way that we were living, I think maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I had the question to myself, you know, based on the data points that I'm seeing, I'm seeing a shift in people's health. I'm seeing a, seeing a shift in the relationship dynamics between men and women. I'm seeing a shift in gender dynamics. I'm seeing a shift in, in how school systems are going. I'm seeing a shift in divorce rates. I'm seeing a shift in happiness and wealth. And this was like 10 or 15 years ago. And I, I didn't have any context to it because I was still young, but I saw that shift and I thought, there's no way I want to grow up in this system. I want to create a different one. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so I've seen the bladder release get put in the in the comments a couple of times, Michelle. So let's do that. Um, if you agree with me, put it in the comments. If you're excited, put it in the comments. If you're scared, put it in the comments. It's okay. You know, sometimes uncertainty, sometimes change is scary. Sometimes you don't want things to change. I didn't even get a sip of my cacao. All right, let's do the bladder release. So take your right hand and you're going to place it on your pubic bone right by your bladder. Now your pubic bone, you'll push in there and you'll actually feel it. Just above it is a little ball or like a, like a sack and you can feel it under the skin too. Push into it. And if you want to, you can actually lean forward because that, that actually relaxes it, pushes it forward so you can get a good grip. Pull it up and then push your hip forward and then move your hips from right to left. Really pull the skin up. You might feel like a burning, stretching sensation in the skin there. And I like to say pee on the grass. <laughs> So move from right to left or pee in the snow. <laughs> and relax. I remember the first time I said that to a group of people and they all looked at me like, what? <laughs> what do you mean pee on the grass? Yeah, move from right to left. Yeah, being a part of the community is going to help. Um, you know, having the global reset starting this year doing it together, all together at the same time. Uh, the only thing you can do right now really is make sure that you're okay. Take care of yourself, take care of your body, reduce your stress, clean up your environment, become aware of the things that are happening and only focus on the things that you can control. I don't focus on, to be honest with you, I don't really focus on politics. I don't focus on the wars. I don't focus on where health's going. I don't focus on any of that. I know where it's going. I don't know the logistics or the way we're gonna get there. Uh, but I know the direction and I don't need to know the details. I'm just going to focus on the things that that are important to me and the things that I can control. I can't control if they spray things in the sky. Can I control if I open up my own sinuses? Can I control if I supplement my body so that I can counterbalance what's being put in the sky? Yes. So those are the things I'm going to focus on. So in the 28 day life reset, for those of you who don't know what we do, in the 28 day life reset, we're creating awareness around the chemicals that are in your environment. There's chemicals in your food, there's chemicals in your water, there's chemicals in your care products and your cleaning products. So everywhere you go, there are chemicals. And these chemicals, they come into the body, they sit in the body, they create stress, disease and dysfunction over time. We're gonna create awareness over it. I don't expect you to change everything overnight, but the awareness is the first step. Then we're going to pick one thing and you're going to focus on that one thing and you're going to make sure that you clean that one thing. I like to go for the heavy hitters. What are the things that you do every day? What are the things you spend a lot of time on? A lot of people wake up every day and they drink a coffee. Okay, great. Let's start with that. Let's turn that coffee into something that's going to help your body. Instead of moldy, 
chemicalized coffee. Let's do an organic fresh coffee. Most coffee today has mold. Most coffee today has glyphosate. Most coffee today has pesticides and GMOs and all this other crap. So let's focus on your morning coffee and let's take that. And for the next month, we're going to fix that. And that's going to make a big difference. Next month, you can focus on the next thing. Next year, you can focus on the next thing. But right now, we're just going to pick one. Another one, okay? This one's actually a big one that I think is really underestimated. What about your detergent? The stuff you put on your clothes. You wear clothes all day from morning to night. Sometimes even during the night for some of you who sleep with clothes on. That's a big one. So if you're gonna put chemicals in your clothing and you're gonna walk around with that everywhere you go, that's a problem. So pick that as your thing that you're gonna focus on for the next 28 days. Find a detergent that's organic or even better, go and get laundry magnets. They're like 80 bucks. You can order them, I think on Amazon and use those. Those create friction because of the magnetism which cleans your clothes. And you don't have to spend money every month to buy more detergent. So over a couple of years, you've probably saved thousands of dollars because you no longer have to buy detergent. You're just using laundry magnets. They're reusable. You can bring them wherever you go. You can use them all the time. It's great. You don't need all that other stuff. All you need is friction in the water and the laundry magnets create friction. Okay. so. Laundry detergent. So if it's not your coffee, pick the laundry, get some laundry magnets or stop using chemicalized laundry detergent or fabric softeners. Okay. What's next? Bed sheets. You know, maybe you want to do bed sheets. You sleep in your bed eight hours a day. So find bed sheets that are good. If you want, go and get linen, organic linen, linen without dyes in it. That's one of the best ones that you can use because linen is actually one of the highest frequency fabrics. It helps heal the body. They use it with wound, uh, with patients who have wounds. So you can use linen. If not, just use organic cotton. But you're sleeping in that every single day, so make sure there's no dyes, make sure there's no chemicals, make sure it's a high quality fabric. It's a little bit more expensive. That's why I don't like to start with that one. <clears throat> now, if you're really wild, maybe stop going to the restaurants or the chemical distribution centers is like, what we like to call them. Most restaurants are chemical distribution centers. They have chemicals in their food and you're putting those chemicals in your body every single day. Another way I like to do it is add something. Maybe you don't want to remove something yet. Maybe you're not ready for that. That's okay. I find removing something is harder than adding something. So you either add or substitute. If you can't substitute, then add. So what can you add? You can add cacao. You can add silica, you can add Irish sea moss, you could add power kirk, you could add our fascia sweet. These are all little things that you can add to make your life better. Uh, someone told me that laundry magnets can blow up your washing machine. I've never seen that happen. I mean, we have them. <laughs> I have no idea how that would happen. We've we've used them for years. They're awesome. Um, if you want to get a cacao and add that into your day, um, you could go to our website, go to shop partners, get the fly cacao that opens up your heart, gives you energy, helps you focus, makes you feel good. Now, if you add that into your day and you feel good, you have more energy and you can focus better then you're going to perform better. You're going to feel better. You're going to make better decisions. So that's why adding something is really beneficial. Okay. So 20 day life reset awareness around the things that are hurting your body. Number two, add or replenish your body with the things that it needs. So we see almost everybody is deficient of silica. Silica is high in babies, low in adults, because as we age, that silica gets converted into calcium and we calcify, we harden, we stiffen, and the body no longer flows. So babies have high silica. Silica is also depleted when we have a lot of metals in the air, a lot of metals in the environment, and we need to detox. So we want to replenish the body of silica, add silica into your day. You can use uh, diatomaceous earth is one of the best sources of silica or horsetail. 
You can also use our fascial foundation. We put it in a, in a capsule for people who don't like to drink chalk or put it in their smoothies. Um, Irish sea moss. Irish sea moss has 92 of the 102 minerals that your body needs. The food, the water, the soil does not have the mineral content that it used to have. When you eat something that you used to eat that had minerals, it no longer does. So you're deficient in minerals. You're deficient in silica, you're deficient in minerals, and adding the Irish sea moss in will help rebalance that. Now that you have the silica, you can absorb the minerals. Now that you have the minerals, you can absorb the water. Now that you absorb the water, you become hydrated. When you're hydrated, your fascia moves. It flows, it cleans, and your body heals itself. So there's a whole supplement guide. You can download it on our website. You'll also get it when you join the 28 Day Life Reset. But the first thing is the awareness. The second thing is go through the supplement guide, replenish your body of the supplements that we recommend. So the minerals, the silica, all that kind of stuff. The third thing is movements. So fascial maneuvers are movement process that we created in 2020 that works on the fascia to heal your body. So it's a slow movement process. It's very similar to yoga, but it has a different philosophy behind it. We teach you all of the movements in the program and each movement is specific to different areas of the body so the body can heal itself. We start by going global. We do movements that affect the entire body. And then as you progress, you're gonna get movements for specific areas for specific issues. So autoimmune, if you have issues in your feet, issues in your hands, head trauma, uh, depression, concussions, any of that, the movements are gonna go global and then we're gonna go more specific at the end. And then when you have an issue come up in your body, you're now going to have the tools to heal yourself. When I have a headache, oh, these are the five movements that I can do to help myself. When I have distension or gas or bloating, these are the movements that I can do to help myself. So that's the goal of this program. It's to give you all the tools to heal yourself so that when you have something come up in your body, you're no longer scared. You no longer have to rely on someone else to help you. You can just do it yourself. The next thing is a little bit of education. So we do about five to 10 minutes of education daily and it's about our philosophy it's about different things that we talk about belief systems the fashion maneuver philosophies how to work with your body how to heal yourself how to clean up your life we talk about those things give you a little bit of information about that and then the final thing is a self self-reflection exercise so journaling so we have you journal every single day and it comes back to what i was saying earlier in the meeting today which is Groundhog Day. You have energy that hits the earth and it cycles every single year and you are either growing or dying, getting better or getting worse. And when that energy hits you, you react to it and you start to do things in your life with that energy. We want you to pay attention to what you're doing, when you're doing it, why you're doing it, how you're doing it and what your patterns are. Because if you can recognize your patterns, then you are self-aware. Once you are self-aware, you can recognize which patterns you don't want anymore and you can make an action plan to change it. For example, every time that you get stressed, maybe you isolate yourself, shut out the world, go into your room and don't talk to anybody. Okay, well, I want you to recognize that that's your pattern so that once you've recognized that you can say the next time that you're stressed, instead of isolating, maybe let's do a fashion maneuver or maybe let's talk to a friend or maybe let's go for a walk. So you can create an action plan to change that. Once you change that habit cycle, your life changes because you're no longer acting the same. You're no longer reacting the same. So patterns, it's really important. First step to changing your life is to recognize the patterns that you have. And if it's a negative pattern or toxic pattern, make note of it. Then create an action plan of the next time that that's about to happen, what can I do instead? then start trying that. And if you get a result that you like, then make that the new pattern. And at first, when you're building a habit, you have to use a lot of focus. Like when you're learning how to drive, you use every bit of you to focus on every bit of the road, the car, where everything is, what the rules are, you're super focused. But now you can drive, talk, talk on the phone, drink your, drink your cacao, you can do whatever you want while you're driving and you don't even know how you got home. That's because your body is running automatic programs. Your body, your subconscious has saved the habit. It knows how to do the act better than you do consciously. That's what we want to do. We want to recognize the patterns that you don't want. We want to create an action plan for the patterns you do want. Then you build a, you hyper-focus on building a new habit. 
then that, uh, that habit gets automated in your body and then your body performs that habit without you even thinking. Now your life changes and you're gonna have a completely different world than you have today. That's what I want. I want a full life transformation. I don't want just you know, a little bit of a better digestion. I want you to have better sleep. I want you to have better energy. I want you to have better relationships with people. I want you to have more alignment with yourself, with your family, with your friends. I want you to do the things that you enjoy in a day. These all come with changing your life, with the life transformation. It's not just about cleaning out your body. It's not just about fixing your shoulder pain. That's boring. I mean, fixing your shoulder pain, that's fun and all that, but I would rather have you have a full-on transformation where your relationship with your mother is better or the relationship with your father is better or your relationship with your partner is better or you actually enjoy waking up in a day because you do something that you enjoy for work. That is what brings me joy. Fixing your shoulder pain is just one step in the journey. It starts there because if you have too much pain, you can't focus on anything else. But as you progress, there's a lot more to this. So to summarize, what are the steps to 28 day life reset? Create awareness around the chemicals in your life that are harming you. Supplement and replenish your body with the things that it needs to rebalance. Move your fascia with fascial maneuvers so that you can start to reduce stress and heal your body. Journal and document the patterns that you have in your life so that you can become self-aware, you can create an action plan and you can change them. Why am I missing? I'm missing something, aren't I? Clean, move, journal, replenish, document, take a before and after photo, I guess. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. If you can't eat or take CMOS, there's other ways you can get minerals. Um, CMOS has 92. You can do tr uh, trace mineral drops. It has like 82. Uh, burdock root has the uh, other 10 minerals that you need that Irish CMOS does not provide. So you can add that into your day as well. Oh yeah, communicating. I mean, communicating comes with journaling. Uh, we also have meetups. So every single day or every other day, we're going to have coaches and hosts who've done our programs. They're volunteers. They're paying it forward. They want to help others. They're, they have a passion for helping others. They're going to be hosting weekly meetups. So you can actually hop in those calls. You can join people from all over the world and you can talk about what you're going through. Sometimes it's, sometimes you don't have somebody to talk to about your relationship or about your job or about what you're experiencing in your body. Or sometimes you have questions coming up that you need answers to. These are all the things that, uh, that you can bring to these weekly meetups. You can come in, we've got hosts and coaches in there. You can ask your questions, you can share what you're going through and they're there to help you answer them. Uh, how to drink cacao. I just do it with water. Especially the fly cacao, the Guatemala blend, I don't really, you don't need to add anything because they have panela, which makes it sweet. They've got vanilla bean in there with some chili too. So it's got a good flavor profile. You can just add water. As you get into the Lysol Artist Program, what we're going to do um, now that you've done the 28 day, which is really to reset your, your daily environment, your life. The Lysol Artist Program is now how do you actually make those sustainable environmental changes. So we're going to we're going to adapt the program to guide you to cleaning out your fridge from all this plastics. We're going to guide you to changing your clothes to fully organic, to the laundry magnets, to the toothpastes, to the water, to the structuring, to all that. We're going to talk more about that stuff in the future in the Lysol Artist Program. So the Lysol Artist Program is more about embodying a lifestyle that's healthy, whereas the 28 day is more about resetting yourself from all the stress that you're currently in. One of the questions that we actually ask in the program is who are you when you're stressed? When you're stressed, do you uh, connect with others? Do you listen? Do you react faster? Do you break things? Do you, um, do you make poor decisions? Do you eat more? I mean, these are all things that are not good when we're stressed and sometimes that can become a habit. Parasite cleanse. You don't need to do a parasite cleanse with our supplement protocol because our supplements already do that. The diatomaceous earth helps remove metals and parasites from the body already.
Okay, let's do another movement. I'm gonna do the stinky arm pick, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I named it this, but I like this name. So you're gonna take your right hand, place it in your armpit on the left side, pull the skin down and lock it. And then lift your arm up. You can see my sweaty armpit. <laughs> That's why it's called the stinky armpit. Okay, now stretch the skin in the armpit area, move around and breathe. Lift your arm up if you want to. You don't have to just do the bent. Breathe. Ooh. Okay. Let's switch sides. So left hand grab under your right armpit. Pull the skin down. Lock it in place. Lift the arm up. Stretch the hand up, move it around. This one's really good if you've got shoulder pain, shoulder issues, frozen shoulder, restrictions, sit a lot, any of that kind of stuff. Restrictions, breathing. This opens up the lungs, the heart. There's a lot that goes in here and we don't really do much to take care of it. I do this in my groin, but don't want to call it the stinky crotch. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, that's funny. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's do sinuses. I know a lot of people are detoxing right now. So grab the skin right on the inside of your nose there. Either side, we're gonna do both. And then use your palm and push the skin back. Really stretch it, breathe. And also do the eye too. You can pin right on the eye socket, right on the inside. How to work with fascia? Grab, pin, stretch, and lock your skin. So let's do the other side. Pin here, stretch with your other hand, lock it in place, move around slowly and breathe. Really stretch it in there. You can even get into the, again, the eye. Stretch around the eye. Whew. Open that up. Breathe. Yeah, so fundamental laws of fascia maneuvers. Very simple. Pin, stretch, and lock your fascia. You're gonna move slowly in counter rotation while you breathe. So what does that look like? We'll do it for the shoulder right now. So grab, pin, stretch. So twist the skin on your elbow outwards and lock it in place. So pin, stretch, lock. Move it slowly, so move it above your head. Counter rotate, so turn your head to the opposite direction. And then move around and breathe. Find the points of tension in your body. And the important part is that you're pinning, stretching and locking one area like the elbow there. I actually like to push my chest up really high for this one. So you really get the fascia in the armpit there. Breathe. Ooh. Okay, other side, so. Oh, Thomas is going for a drink. Hang on. Right there. Thomas? 
So let's do the other side. Grab the elbow, pin it, stretch it, so twist it, lock it, lift it up, move your head opposite direction, counter rotation, move slowly and breathe. What are those things called again, where they go twist it, lock it, bop it, or whatever, twist it, twist it, bop, it's like a toy, a kid's toy. <laughs> we should do that for fashion maneuvers. It's the same thing. Okay, how do you guys feel? It's called a bop it? Okay. Bop it, yes, it's the same thing. Pin, stretch, lock. Move slowly, counter rotate, breathe, lock it, bop it. Okay, let's do the jaw. So right hand, fingers facing back, right on the jaw there. Left hand, fingers facing forwards on the other side. Squeeze your cheeks, twist so you look funny. And then breathe. Move around slowly, rotate. <laughs> Pop it, twist it, pull it. Yeah, we should create a little uh, fashion maneuver song. That, that's similar to that, that would be funny. Maybe a kid's one. Okay, let's do psoas or intestines for gas, bloating, distension, autoimmune, or any digestive issues, or hip or lower back issues. So take both hands, place it on the belly button, go two inches to the right and an inch down. Grab the fascia there. Pull the skin up really tight. Lift your leg forward, your left leg forward, lean back. Now, you're really just stretching and pulling the skin over top of the intestines. And you might feel a stretch into your hip, the front of your leg. That's what you want. Remember, pin, stretch, lock, then move. So we're pinning, stretching, locking over the intestines. Move slowly, breathe. Okay, and relax. Oh, that one felt good. Feeling so much better than I did 10 minutes ago. Good. That was calming. Good, good. Can we do one for coughing? <clears throat> yes, we can open up something in the throat. That might help. But let's do the other side here. So both hands on the belly button. Two inches to the left this time. Those are loud. <laughs> Two inches down. Pull the skin up, stretch it, pin, stretch, lock. Lean the right foot forward, lean back, breathe. And relax. Okay, so a couple techniques that are important for fascial maneuvers. First off, you've got the spinal pelvic lock. So spinal pelvic lock, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your belly button into your spine. Hold your pee or pull all your sex organs up and lock it in place. And as you do that, you move around. That brings all the bones and everything to the center of your body and then you're moving the outer layers of fascia around it. Breathing. There's different types of breathing. So you're gonna do breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, breathing in through the mouth, out through the mouth, and then stage breathing where you actually breathe in, you hold more, more, and then you exhale. And what we're doing is we're bringing as much air into the body that we possibly can. As you bring the air in, it expands the body from the inside out, which creates the release. 
So we're actually using breathing to release the fascia in fascial maneuvers, not just to bring oxygen and electricity in. As for pinning and locking the fascia, what we're doing is you're, you're pinning one area so it can't move, and then you're stretching the other. So in massage, you slide. In fascia maneuvers, you actually stretch it like this, and then you hold it. So what I like to do is to find a point of tension, go like this, which area creates the most tension for me? There's not that much this way. What about this way? There's a bit more there. Oh, right there. That feels like the highest point of tension for me. So that's the direction that I wanna go. Let's try another one. So if I place my hands here, if I stretch the skin apart, so create that stretching sensation. Let me try a different angle. Let me try down. Imagine a string connecting my two fingers. There, 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 there. So I'm going in all directions and I'm finding that line of tension. Find the line of tension, hold that in a stretched position and then move slowly while you breathe. That's how you're gonna unlock the fascia. So you're, you're finding, find that point. So let's say, what's a good one that I can do? Oh, this one, okay? There's a line of tension from here across for me. Everybody has this, so try this with me. Place your hands here, stretch apart, hold it. It's gonna feel like it's tearing or burning or whatever. Now move around. while keeping the fingers locked. So you pinned, you stretched, and you locked your fingers in a point of tension. And then you move slowly while you breathe. As you breathe, you bring air in to create expansion and it releases. Now feel that. Whew. That one feels really good. I don't do that one enough. So you're finding the points of tension. So pin, stretch, lock in a point of tension. Move slowly, then breathe, bring the air in to create friction and expansion, and then move around and let it go. And that will help it release. And the question is, do you get wrinkles when you stretch your skin or your fascia? No. Wrinkles come from the restriction of. If I'm restricted here, what happens? Or dehydrated, it goes like this. Okay, so that's not good. You wanna do the opposite, you wanna stretch it. So playing with your face, like watch this, if I pin here um, above my nose and I pull up or I pull to the side, where is the tension line? Find it for you, okay? There's a tension line right there for me. So I'm gonna pin, stretch and lock that. Now breathe. Okay, now let me find another point. Okay, there's another line of tension. Okay, can I find another one? Yeah. As I pull this, does it pull my other hand? Yes. Okay, there's tension. Breathe. Okay, now let that relax. So you're finding two points of tension. You're pinning, stretching, and locking it. Then you're moving slowly in counter rotation while you breathe. The breath brings oxygen and pressure in, which creates friction and expansion, which releases the fascia. That's how the body works. Fascia holds the, muscle, the, bo the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, and the organs, and everything else inside. So when we stretch, pin, lock, move, and breathe, the fascia actually creates friction within the layers and it opens things up, okay? Imagine you had all these layers and they're all sticky, dehydrated and compressed. So imagine it's like this and it goes down to this. Now nothing can flow, which means everything gets trapped and stored in there, which is not good. It's like a plumbing pipe getting blocked or clogged, okay? Now, as you breathe, you're expanding those layers. 
as you pin stretch and lock, you're creating friction between those layers. So with the friction and then the breathing, you expand. Wow, I really feel that in my face. Okay, let's do another one. So pin right on the outer edge of your lip and then stretch it, stretch your lips. Ooh. Today's focus is who can look the funniest during their maneuvers. Move around, breathe. Ah. Oh, that felt good. Why do you burp? Burp is a change in pressure. This is so special and easy and it works. Yes. Working on your body should be easy. You won, Bianca. You look the funniest. Well, too bad only everybody can see me. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. So pin the skin right on the edge and then use your other hand to stretch. Hold it there, move around, breathe. Oh, this feels good. I don't do this one enough. Okay. Ah, all I'm doing is finding the, the tension line. So pin and then move it like, is it this line? Is it this line? Is it this line? There's imaginary lines that come and connect all your fascia. Find the ones that you've got a restriction. Okay, there's mine. Move and breathe. Oh, that feels really good. Okay. How do you guys feel? My face feels great, yes. Mine too, actually. I feel like my face changed. Okay, which one do we not normally do? Uh, let's try another one. Oh, see if you can grab your chin and pull it apart underneath here. There we go. Ow, okay. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna tense my lip after I've grabbed it. No move. I'm pulling it apart with my fingers. Actually, a rotation is nice. And then contract it, move. It just gets weirder and weirder. Ah. that one changed something in my neck feel more symmetrical